So we're now going to talk about AI is transforming manufacturing. So the, the key areas that we'll discuss today is predictive maintenance, quality, manufacturing process optimization, and supply chain optimization. And there are others, but these are the main ones that are uh, moving into industry today. And I'm gonna go have, have a look at each of those in turn. So predictive maintenance is about on condition maintenance versus a schedule maintenance. So rather than every so often you do a schedule maintenance, you might still do that, but you've also got on condition monitoring with, with, uh, with, an, with a predictive maintenance. So data gets collected, temperature, current, RPM, environmental parameters, vibration, time, hours, work, you know, you name it, all of the, all of the input data for your process. A machine or, or chemical process, whatever it is. And what you end up getting is less downtime, less production delays, inventory, maintenance costs, unproductive labor, all of those things that are caused by machines going down. And we can all remember, you know, you're trying to make your numbers uh, for corporate and uh, you, you, you know you're going to get there. And all of a sudden you find out that a milling machine broke down and the, and the, the spare part you thought uh, was a wrong part. Now you got to wait for somebody to ship you a new one and they're on back order and it now becomes a disaster. These are things that can really be helped by uh, predictive maintenance. And predictive maintenance is probably the most important uh, AI application in manufacturing right now. Below that top box, you see, so how does it work? You have sensors. The sensors uh, with the AI program identify machine parameter reaching threshold and then um, they tell you what the cause is and give you an alert. So General Electric has estimated it has reduced machine downtime by 30% using AI-based predictive maintenance. So pretty powerful. Now, quality, um, there's, there's three different areas where AI can help with quality. The top one is about looking at digital images and non-destructive testing or non-destructive in uh, inspection. Visual, liquid penetrant, radiographic, x-ray, ultrasonic, you name it. Um, these are all things that people in manufacturing are familiar with. And AI can, you, can, can, can do this work as he did with breast cancer screening. Reduce, it gives you reduced inspector Fatigue. You all know that you got people sitting in dark rooms looking at the same image over and over and over, and uh, and you can help those people. And I've seen an example of one where AI shows them uh, what to look at. Hey, you know, you don't have to look at the whole thing yourself. These are the things that you need to check. You could off fully automate it, uh, inspection, but you get better defect detection, less false indications, and of course, it's faster and more repeatable. The second area is what I call AI for quality management, which is to me the most important thing that uh, AI can do. And I'm calling it statistical process control on steroids. So for those of you not familiar with SBC, it's when you look at the output and you track the output. And even though it's within, uh, within limits, you watch what it's doing and you avoid it drifting out. That's been going. That, that's been available for years. I've I've had the experience of not doing SBC and suddenly getting surprised that something fails a, fails a test that's been passing for years. What AI does is it not only looks at the output, looks at all the inputs that can affect it, and even the ones that uh, how they can work together to affect it. So you collect the data on machine health and quality records and so on. And it, it analyzes the effect of the, all the variables and it'll start to predict that your, uh, that your quality is starting to drift or the mean has shifted or there's more variation, something else. Plus it can, it can give you a, 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 a predict, a, an analysis of the root cause. And even if it doesn't give you the root cause, you'll have all the data. And I know that in my case, Sometimes we had expensive failures at, uh, at the final stage and we were shut down and scrambling around trying to root cause correct uh, a problem. We didn't know what it was. 
Imagine if you had all the data for those batches and you didn't have to go back for digging through shop orders to find stuff. The final thing is, and this is from my satellite part of the business, you know, you might have electronic uh, sub-assemblies at 18 months to build, go through a series of tests. You don't know if the whole thing's going to work until you get it all together. You do a functional test and it fails, you got a problem. So AI essentially doing what the second block is, is that much more import important for things that are, have a long manufacturing cycle with various tests where you don't know if it's all going to work until the end. So it's, it can really help improve yield, scrap, downtime, inventory, and of course, better customer satisfaction. Now, the third item is manufacturing process optimization. So um, unlike MRP or ERP, Materials Requirements Planning, um, AI decides what steps to take. MRP uses explicit instructions. Feed in the information and they'll, it'll be analyzed a certain way. Whereas AI will, will look at the data as, it's, as things are changing and may decide to analyze things differently. And this is the secret of it. And as a result of that, it can do a much better job. So it uses any relevant history, things like lead times, run and setup times, batch size, part number, all of those things, operator performance, environmental parameters, machine data. Uh, and, it, and ultimately it, it'll make a forecast and tell you when to launch your orders, the same way MRP does, except it'll do a lot better. The forecast will be better, lead times will be uh, shorter, you'll get a better demand forecast, less inventory and so on. AI, uh, based production, according to McKinsey, uh, which, by the way, if you're looking for information about uh, AI, McKinsey, A. McKinsey, you can find them just by Googling. He has, he has some really good articles. Anyway, he said that forecasts be 20% better and inventory would go down by 5% and reduced planner workload by 50%. And I found that interesting because I worked with uh, an MRP system and it always interested me that we needed such a big department full of Apex trained uh, planners in order to run the plant uh, because it was actually quite complicated for them to use. And what AI offers is a smart MRP that can make a lot of decisions for the planners. So you might not need as many, or at least they may not have to work so hard, which are both good. It's interesting. So forecasting uh, being 20% better really means forecasting is less wrong by 20%. Yes. Yeah. So it's yeah. more accurate. Right. And, um, and Apex was good for a while, Dave. I was in that community of Apex people. But you're right. As soon as you lose somebody, there's such a steep incline for learning to get somebody up to speed, which is yeah. amazing. Right. AI for supply chain optimization. It's very similar to manufacturing process uh, optimization, except it's looking at some additional things, such as transportation logistics, supplier delivery, quality performance. You can look at political environmental factors. Um, supplier internal data is an interesting one because I know that some OEMs with their key suppliers actually share uh, their ERP system. So they can actually track what's happening within the plant of their suppliers. So it gives that much more access to improve their forecasts. But uh, again, you get better consumption forecasts, better inventory, reduce part obsolescence, fuser stockouts, uh, <clears throat> reduce lead time, less hold times and things being stuck in some place uh, waiting to get shipped. I'll just mention for anybody that's interested, there's there's a there's a uh, super cluster organization in Eastern Canada that uh, is is doing AI supporting AI projects, and they have three AI projects on supply chain optimization. That that organization is called Scale AI, which is written like the word scale AI after it. And you can go read about the projects and, and how they're working. So it's it's an example of uh, of what's going on in this area, and. Uh, 
So that's the four things. 